You see their little cone-shaped dirt houses on the ground, like many volcanoes scattered around your yard. Ants are usually harmless little bugs, paying you no attention, just going about their day working hard. But if you've just stepped near a group of Australian bulldog ants, I have one word for you. Run! These terrifying insects get the name from those, yep, hard to miss, those huge spiky jaws protruding from their mouth. That's what they use to latch on to whatever critter happens to be their unlucky lunch today. That meal can include beetles, caterpillars, flies, or even wasps, spiders, and frogs. These ants will go after anything that gets too close. They're ferocious and smart. They'll drive out their competitor, the flat huntsman spider, by filling its nest with twigs, leaves, and anything on hand. This drives the arachnid out, leaving more lunch for the ants. But back to those malicious mandibles. That's not the only thing you gotta look out for. They use those jaws to hold on to something, a meal, an enemy, your skin, while they inject a highly venomous stinger. This is no bee sting either. They can do it multiple times, and it's harmless to them. It's the sting you have to look out for, not the bite. Though the bite's not a pleasant feeling either. And if one senses danger, it'll release a chemical in the air to alert the others. If you accidentally get too close to their colony, the whole dang brigade will come out and chase you away. And to top it all off, they have excellent vision, they're fast, and they can jump. They're also pretty big for ants, about as long as a matchstick. Stay far away from this one. Now, don't just watch your feet for dangers crawling below. Look out! There's an Africanized bee coming right at you. This thing is a lab experiment gone terribly wrong. It all started in the 1950s. The goal? Make a bee that produces more honey. The method? Cross an African species of honeybee with a bunch of European ones. The result? A ferocious Franken bee, more aggressive and defensive than most types. Actually, at first, everything was fine. But one day, because of a laboratory mishap, more than 20 colonies of these monsters broke free. They spread throughout South America and up into the northern continent. They say these bees don't like it if someone gets closer than 15 feet, just half the length of a bus, to their home, and they all come out together to defend it. That's around 10,000 angry bees headed your way. They'll chase down an intruder over the length of four football fields. Hope you've had enough stamina to escape this bug. And then there are these nightmarish large bees. The Asian green hornet is the biggest, coming in at about the size of your thumb and 20 times more massive than your standard honeybee. These guys feed on honeybees, wasps, mantises, and even other hornets. They can reach speeds of 25 miles per hour in the pursuit of food or to drive an intrusive human away. Their stinger is long enough to puncture a beekeeping suit. And apparently, there are cases of these hornets spraying their venom into an intruder's eyes. Well, we'll take a break from flying frights and head to the beach. But a peaceful shell-collecting trip can end in a nightmare if you accidentally pick up a cone snail. When hunting or defending themselves, these snails shoot a needle-like harpoon through the pointy end of the shell. Just a tiny drop of its venom is enough for 10 adults. Oh, and there's currently no anti-venom for this one. Now, the sea dweller with the strongest venom in the world is the box jellyfish. The creature is pretty large, about the length of your forearm, not including those long, long tentacles. Yet, people may not notice it because it's see-through. The jellyfish grabs onto its prey with all those toxic tentacles. They have enough venom for 60 grown people. Not many can brag of surviving a rendezvous with this jelly. Oh. The sea is no safer than your backyard, and while you're cleaning out the shed, watch out for the brown recluse spider. They're not nightmarishly big, not often growing larger than the size of a quarter. But that's the problem. You'll easily see a tarantula coming at you, which are harmless, by the way. With a brown recluse, you won't see it till it's too late. The initial bite isn't very painful. Some people don't even know they've been bitten. But as soon as it sank its fangs in you, its venom starts to do its dirty but silent work. Within 3 to 8 hours, you get redness and swelling at the site. Then comes the burning. 
and it intensifies from there. The effects are usually done after 5 days. But they can continue for up to 3 months. Even familiar insects can be dangerous, too. Like that fly buzzing around your kitchen? You know what journey he's probably had? Well, before flying to your place, it probably sat on the dumpster. Then it flew over to the public restroom, walked all over the floor, walls, and toilet seats. Maybe it stopped in a cow pasture, the zoo. It's been to all kinds of filthy places, and now it's walking all over that beautiful fruit bowl you have on display. And whatever microbes were in the stuff it was stomping around and putting its mouth parts on, they're now all over your food. The thing about bacteria, it makes people sick. So clean up and keep flies out. Now, take a closer look at that ladybug in your house. It could be an imposter. The Asian lady beetle is more yellow-orange than red like ladybugs. You can tell the difference for sure if it has an M-shaped stain on its head. If so, that's not a harmless ladybug. Asian lady beetles were brought to North America and Europe from Asia. The goal was to deal with parasitic aphids. But that plan backfired, sounds familiar, and the bug itself became a parasite. There were so many of them, they practically replaced the classic ladybug. And not only can they bite, they also produce a stinky yellow ooze that can stain your walls or any other surface they crawl on. The hag moth looks more like a spider than a caterpillar. All those arm-like tentacles coming out of its sides are covered in venomous hairs. One touch can leave you with a painful irritation. If you ever catch any fuzzy caterpillar crawling on you, don't remove it with your fingers. Grab a pair of tweezers. If one manages to sting you, gently put tape on the site and peel it off to get all the hairs out. Don't just use the same piece of tape twice. You could end up sticking a hair back into yourself. Wash the area with soap and water and use an anti-itch cream if you need. If you're in North America, watch out for the most venomous scorpion on the continent. Arizona bark scorpions travel in packs. So if you ever see one, know that its friends are hiding nearby. They have excellent night vision, so they can see you while you might not be able to see them. And what's really scary? They prefer to be upside down. So one could be hiding right under the table you're sitting at. But some terrors are nearly undetectable to the eye. They sit comfortably on the tips of grass and wait for their lunch to pass by. Oh, look! It's your leg! The monster grabs on and makes a human juice box out of you. Ticks might be small, but that's what makes them so scary. They can hide anywhere. Your grass, bushes, on the ground, in the leaves. You hardly feel them crawling on you, and their bite goes undetected. Sometimes they can even make a person sick. Ew, yeah. That's what most cockroaches hear during any rendezvous with our species. Like flies, they've got their dirty little hands and feet all over your surfaces, and possibly even food. And yes, they can bite people, though it's rare. And they're found on every continent except Antarctica. Hey, looks like I'm moving there. So how's this sound? A creepy crawly hanging out right in your bed as you sleep soundly at night. Even worse, it's dining on you. Bed bugs are so infamous, they need no introduction. But surprisingly, they're not considered dangerous to health. Though, who would want to be covered in small red bites everywhere? Also, don't assume these guys only hang out in dirty houses. They'll take any bed in any home if given the chance. Termites don't bite, they don't crawl in your bed, and they have no interest in what food you have in the cupboards. What they're munching on is your house. And they do it in secret. Most people don't even know they have a problem until it's too late. That's when wood structures start to lose their strength. Like bed bugs, they're tough to get rid of. And don't assume they're just in the walls. They can also be chowing down on the sofa. Yep, right there as you watch TV or take a nap. Sweet dreams!